Hi you guys, Lindsay here. Well, welcome back to my channel, Inside to Him. Hi you guys. It is very early in the morning, 6, 11 a.m. Still dark outside, if you can see that. But I am here at the airport. Um, I don't know why I'm singing. It's early. That's probably why. <laughs> um, anyway, so yeah, this is my third annual New York City vlog. So welcome. Uh, it's a short trip. By the time I land today, wheels down to wheels up will only be 28 hours in the city so it's a really quick turnaround but I have packed a lot in and I have lots of really fun plans including meeting up with some of my <laughs> internet friends um, people that I know from Instagram and people that I met when I went to New York social hour <coughs> last year and I think, yeah, social hour is coming up again this Tuesday. So if you're in the city and you sew, go to social hour. It's a lot of fun and you meet a lot of really cool people who share similar passion as you. What's better than that? Um, so yeah, I have some plans to meet up with them. Of course, I have plans to go shopping. I have plans to go to the Met Museum to see the camp exhibit. Um, and then tomorrow is really just all about the Taylor Swift concert so if you're not here for that content that's fine you can stick around through today and then just abort whenever <laughs> whenever it gets to tomorrow things are going to get a little mm, let's say excitable um, let's say maybe immature young um, but I am very very excited about that as well I cannot get rid of this cold. I don't know what to do. It's in my chest. It's congestion. I'm trying to let it run its course, but we're on Thursday will be two weeks. I mean, come on. Um, let's see, what else can I talk about in the intro? I'm wearing my rainbow pastel seersucker dress today. Um, I had to check my bag, like they made me check my bag. I've never checked a bag before. I just, <laughs> I just don't do that. So I feel a little empty handed. All I have is my um, little backpack here, but you know, I'm rocking it out. It was a little strange, like knowing what to bring on the plane and what to just get when I get there. Um, my, I'm just not used to it. But anyways, um, it's fine, it's fine, we're gonna be good. Um, so yeah, I'm flying into Newark, and then I'll take the air train <coughs> into Penn Station, and then I'm gonna head straight up to the Met Museum. So here's a lot of really fun traveling content, a lot of really fun flying content, <laughs> just to show the passage of time. And um, I'll see you guys on the other side. And also, I forgot to tell you guys earlier today, I am alone this trip. It's so sad. Amber could not make it. She has a friend who has terminal cancer. So she's headed there this weekend to see her and give her 
all the love she deserves it's gonna make me emotional so <laughs> no more sad stuff but yeah amber can't be here so it's really strange because we've come together the past three years so it's really odd seeing all of our favorite spots and places that we've hung out but she's not with me but that's okay um, at my first destination can anybody tell where it is dun, dun, dun. That's right, I'm at the Metropolitan Museum. I'm going to see the camp exhibit. Um, it's the fashion one that the Met Gala is based on with all of like the crazy outlandish avant-garde, I almost call them costumes, but they're not. They're garments, it's fashion. So I'm gonna head in there and check it out. I have <laughs> a little more than an hour. So we'll see how much I can get done by myself in an hour. So here's my take on what it's like inside the camp exhibit at the Met. I was pleasantly surprised to see the walls covered in this beautiful pink. The first part of the exhibit explores the evolution of the definition of the word camp. First camp as a verb, then camp as an adjective, and then as a noun. You can pause the video to read these explanations, but basically camp has evolved from meaning to flaunt, the verb, to uh, explaining like cross-dressing, the adjective, and also kind of defining what a homosexual is, the noun. During this part of the exhibit, you could hear over the rainbow playing through the speakers. Then in the 1960s, this woman, Susan Sontag, wrote uh, this thing called Notes on Camp. The audio in the exhibit switches to the sound of a typewriter, and these next displays illustrates Sontag's 58 different notes, the notes on camp. Then Sontag also explored the idea of unintentional camp versus deliberate camp. And these next displays show one of each of these side by side. They didn't allow video beyond this point, but I wouldn't be a good vlogger if I didn't take some anyways. <laughs> I didn't get a lot, but if you want to see more of this room and hear the exhibit explained in much more detail, the Met has this really awesome video on their website. I have linked it in the description box so you can check that out. But in general, I thought that the exhibit was more of a kind of broader audio visual experience rather than kind of just a fashion exhibit that was just about the clothes on the mannequins. Uh, once you entered this main room, you couldn't really get up close to every garment, especially the ones that were on the second floor. But when you stepped back, kind of zoomed out and took it all in, it was very visually kind of stunning. Very bright colors and so many textures. So all of that kind of taking it in, like it, taking in all the senses, what you're hearing over the speakers, what you're seeing with your eyes, you know, all of that together was really quite an experience. But I wouldn't say that I walked away from this really getting a better understanding of garments or construction or anything along those lines. It was really just kind of a beautiful audiovisual experience.
All right, sorry I've been a bad vlogger, but I have just been bouncing around by myself in and out of different stores, not necessarily staying for very long. But what I'm trying to do is find fabric to make this Reformation dress and the trim. So I went in, I don't know, 45 trim stores. And the closest I got was this from Lauren Trimming. So I'm at Mood, trying to find fabric. And no pun intended, but I'm not really in the mood. Um, I know I'm in the right section. I just am not feeling I'm like looking for it for some reason. It's also really hot and humid out. So it could have something to do with it. <laughs> um, but I went to Metro Textiles and B&J and all the usual places. And no luck. So I'm going to keep going though. I'll keep you posted. Okay, so I came to Chic. Don't mind this very humid and look what I found this is my social mashup fabric um, I suspected I got it from chic and sure enough here it is so if you're in New York City come to chic fabrics on West 38 they have a ton of it left and come get you some all right you guys I am back at the hotel after a very long day. Look, there's a TV in the mirror. Wait for it. Cool. <laughs> Anyways, um, so where did I last leave you? Okay, I'm delirious. I don't know how important TV is that you need it while you brush your teeth, but and now I can't turn it off. There we go. I don't know how important TV is. Um, okay, so I last left you in mood. Was that the last time we spoke? Well, that seems sad. Um, I ended up meeting up with a few sewing friends. Um, some girls I know from Instagram. We went to Fabrics and Fabrics and uh, got some fabric. And then we went to dinner at some Thai place. It was not in the garment district. Um, so I'm not going to tell you what it was. It's kind of a kind of a bit of a trek to get out there anyways, but it was really good. If you want to know, and you're in, I think it was in the Hell's Kitchen area, um, let me know in the comments. But I thought we would do a fabric haul. Doesn't that sound like fun? Okay, full disclosure though, I didn't get a lot. Um, I only have three things and then some trims. So, better than nothing. And also, to be quite honest with you, I still haven't even touched some of my fabric that I got at the last trip or the trip before that one. So I really had no business buying a ton of fabric. I think last time, what was the count? Like 30 something pieces? That's, in no, that's insane, don't do that. <laughs> um, but I did pick up some stuff, so I'll show you what I got. First up, we have this, and the lighting in here is not Great, this is coming, this is not as beige. Um, but there's not really any more lights. Is that better? I mean, I guess. Um, it is like a Ponte-esque fabric. Um, it has this really pretty black, gray, and cream, which I really do not have enough like neutral patterns. Like I love patterned fabric but a lot of it tends to be very colorful and whatnot. So it would be nice to have something that's just a little more subtle for the days where I'm not feeling like being so colorful, but it's still not a solid, you know what I mean? So this will be a really pretty like fit and flare. I got this from Chic. It was $2 a yard. Um, and there are, I think there was two yards here. So I got that. And then also from Chic, I went back and got the Carolina Herrera zebra fabric. So 
if you don't remember this story, last year when we went, <coughs> excuse me, I got a couple of Carolina Herrera fabrics. And so whenever I went home, I went to try and find them like on Carolina Herrera's website. Like what did she make out of these fabrics? And we had seen this in the store and I remember like it, it stuck in my mind. Um, so when I saw it on her website, I was like, oh my God, that's that zebra fabric. Um, I got this from Chic and I think that they just don't know that's what they've got. Um, so they had some of it left today. I got it for $6 a yard and I got three yards. I plan to make a shirt dress of some sort from it, probably sleeveless. Um, but they still have plenty of this there. So if you're in New York or will be in New York and you like this, go check it out. They don't really have an online <laughs> situation happening. Um, but I also went to Fabrics and Fabrics and got, wait for it, sort of a sneak peek. Dun, dun, dun. This gorgeous brocade. So this is Christian Siriano. It is navy, although it's looking a little black, but it's navy with gold metallic thread and then these um, digitally printed flowers. So it's kind of like two processes. One is the fabric is printed with the flowers and the navy background and then this gold thread is woven throughout. And I just think that's gonna make such a gorgeous dress for the holidays for, I mean, I don't have to go to any weddings, but if you did, um, it would be perfect for that. Perfect for any, you know, work party, anything where you want to feel a little bit fancy. So I think this is like $40 a yard pricey, but like I said about fabrics and fabrics before they have really great quality stuff. So, I mean, even the back of this is sort of pretty in a neutral, quiet, kind of monochromatic way. Anyways, um, and then when I was at Pacific Trim, I got a whole bunch of ribbing. So I have a project in mind. Um, this would be the waist band. These would be the cuffs, like a, for a bomber jacket, you know? And this is gonna be like the outer part of the welt pocket. But then I also found these, this little cutie. Let me see if I can show you how it works. <laughs> Basically you would attach it to a sleeve and it has this cute little like sleeve ruffle thing happening. So I'm thinking like sweatshirt fleece and then attach like black sweatshirt fleece and then attach this to the bottom for like a really frilly pretty girly touch I don't know it was speaking to me it was also in the 50% off bin so I couldn't pass that up 50% off here and here and here this oh sorry all of these were 50% off this is the only one I paid full price for so I got all this for like $17 or something like that and then remember earlier today I was showing you guys that reformation dress that I want to make the like botanical one with the trim so I found this place, I mean, I went in a lot of trim stores today. Um, this one, Lauren Trimming had, it's not focusing, had the closest thing to the inspiration photo. And they have like a natural color and then one that's more vanilla. It's not totally true white, but I mean, either of these would be good options. I'm tending to lean toward the bigger one because it would stand out more, but it will depend on what fabric I find. I went everywhere uh, I could possibly think of. All the really nice stores as well as the kind of, you know, cheapy stores and could not find that fabric or anything like it, like not even close anywhere. So now I'm thinking instead of trying to find something that's like just like that, that I'm going to just do like an inspired buy. So it'll still be like a lightweight linen um, or like linen cotton blend. It probably still floral. I would love to find a botanical, but I'm not so beholden to it being exactly like the inspiration. So now that I've seen what's out there and I'm being a little bit more realistic about like what I can find. 
So that's good, I guess, because if you can't find it here, I mean, are you really going to find it anywhere? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I went to all of the stores today um, and showed the picture to the employees and they were like, yeah, no, we don't really have anything like that. So, I mean, it is what it is. In a way, I'm kind of glad that I didn't find <coughs> anything close because now I'll make my own creation. And I really feel like the what makes that dress so special isn't necessarily the fabric. It's the application of the trim and how unique like all those tiers are. So that's my story with that dress. It is like nine something. Oh no, it's a little after 10 p.m. Madeline is my Swifty, my sewing Swifty friend. We are both equally passionate about sewing as we are about Taylor Swift. So we are headed to this concert tomorrow. And for those of you that think that we are crazy for getting up and going at three in the morning, like I'll have you know there are already people outside. Um, Taylor Swift and her father had someone deliver them pizza when they heard they were out there. So I think us going at three or four in the morning is not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. But we are going to chat and talk and hang out and be girly and have a lot of fun. Sorry, the video cut off and then I re-recorded it without recording. It is late. <laughs> it is late and my brain is not working. Today has already been, I got up at 4.30. So, what is that, 16 hours? Yeah, long day. But we're going to have a good time making the most of this, you know, very unique opportunity um, to hang out and possibly meet Taylor Swift. I mean, I don't know. Anything can happen tomorrow. Like, literally anything can happen. We could become best friends. Right? I mean, why not? The possibilities are endless. Um, but, yeah. So, I will, I guess, be back when Madeline gets here. I don't know if she wants to be on camera or not. <laughs> That's kind of like putting her on the spot. Either way, I don't know. I can't think much past five seconds from now. So, I'll see you soon, one way or another. Well, it's been maybe four hours since I spoke to you last. I took a little nap, I got ready. As you can tell, I'm adorned with my Taylor Swift lover eye heart patch, whatever. And we are getting ready to head down to the park. Apparently there's already hundreds of people there. They've been camped out since 9 p.m. last night. I slept in a comfy bed. It was great. Um, so who knows? We don't really know what to expect, but we're just telling ourselves it's going to be awesome no matter what. So I'll see you at the park. So it is 4.08 a.m. and there are thousands of people here. Supposedly they all got here at like some people I guess the first person was in line at like 3 p.m. yesterday so hopefully that will have been worth it for them but we're just excited to be here like everyone in line is dressed up and excited and has their merch on so we'll see oh you guys <clears throat> hold on waiting for it to focus 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 Oh, I'm a mess. Um, it was very hot, very humid, very crowded. There were 7,000 people there, supposedly. Um, Hannah Brown, The Bachelorette, uh, Tiffany Haddish, of course, the entire GMA hosting team was there. And it was just magical. She, so they did a uh, sound check with just the band. And then Taylor came out for a sound check, three songs, and then she did a little onstage interview, and then she performed those three songs for the TV show. So all in all, we heard the three songs three times and got to see an interview. And I was definitely like the closest to her I've ever been that I know of. And she's just very professional, like in all the like little down times, like when they're counting down and getting ready to go live 
Um, she was standing there and kind of trying to like get herself in the moment and get herself hyped up, but while also still like engaging with the fans. I don't know. It, it was a lot and it was great. Um, so I have a bunch of videos <clears throat> that I shared on my Instagram story that I'm going to insert here in case you guys want to see what it was like there. Um, and if you have any questions about what it's like to go to a GMA summer concert filming thing, let me know. I'm happy to talk about it more. Um, but I have, it's 10 a.m. I almost said p.m. This is, I got up at what, 3? 3, 3 a.m.? Yeah, 3 a.m. Yesterday I got up at 4.30. Um, so yeah, running on fumes. But I have to get to the airport and head home and get my sunny. So this is probably going to wrap up my trip here in New York City. I know it was super short and I know it was only, only one day of like sewing stuff, but I still hope that you enjoyed coming along with me. I loved having you and I had a really, really, really great time. Um, I was really able to cram in a lot of great fun stuff and see all my friends here. So that made it all worth it, even though I've gotten three hours of sleep. Yeah three, three and a half hours of sleep. Um, so anyways, thank you all so much for watching. Enjoy these next few clips and I will see you all very soon. Bye.